How to build a property empire. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to look at another story of someone building a property empire here in Australia. Now think, what do you need guys? What, what, what do you think would be the factor, you know? Um, uh, good business skills, a degree, being a tradie, so you can renovate them. What do you, what do you reckon? What do you, what do you think is the number one thing that you need to get you started in property? I'm going to have a shot of coffee and let me know in the comments, guys. Is it a sob story, a background story? Well, it's pretty much a deposit given to you when you're 19. <laughs> so $30,000 gift, everyone. So let's have a look at this article about Chris Christoffi. And here's the thing, I mean, good on him. He owns 22 investment properties. Now, there's a few things to consider. I mean, nothing against the guy if he got given a gift of, of money and he's turned it into something, into, you know, grown it. Good on him. You, so many people are given money and just fritter it away. My concern is more so just that this is just playing into the obsession we have here in Australia of property, property, property. You know, building a property portfolio, getting one thing, property after another. I was talking to, to a friend the other day, yesterday. I rang him up um, and we were having a chat. He's in the mortgage broking business. So he's a broker. And he was saying he had one gentleman get in touch with him. He would spent 40 years, this bloke, building up a portfolio of just commercial inner city properties. So he'd done quite well, but he was in trouble because what do you think's happening with the commercial inner city property sector at the moment? No one's renting the retail spaces. No one's in the offices. <laughs> and I, I was saying there's going to be a cultural shift. There's going to be people that are going to say, you know what, we can work from home or if we get an office, we'll just move out into a little one at the suburbs. We'll really cut our rent. Maybe we'll only get enough space where we need to have meetings or just a little reception area, that type of thing. Maybe we just make a deal with a third party. So he's making suggestions to this gentleman. What if you flip it into a accommodation, turn it into apartments, do this or this. And the guys put all his eggs in one sector, one basket. He hasn't diversified. That's a similar thing with this. Um, well, we'll have to see. 22 investment properties. I wonder if Chris has gone all in on residential or if he's mixed it up a bit in the property sector. So let's have have a look at this article because you know that gentleman is going to face some challenging times now because even if the recession tends to fade, but you know, well, I'm I'm going to bring up a, a reference I like to introduce people to. This is the Property Council. I'll just do it. Property Council Data Room. Do I have it up here? Nope, I don't. Property Council Data Room, and you can see. A whole lot of useful information here and one I tend to refer to at the moment is just commercial office vacancy rates because it's a quite a clear demonstration of the recession Australia had to have here we hit the recession and a few years offices just started downsizing vacancy rates shot up to over 20 percent so it's going to be interesting, particularly those that have invested in these commercial properties in the middle of the city or those that real estate investment trusts that are just focusing on those. Maybe something to look at will be the ones that are focusing on the on the fringe a little bit further out. So, yeah, I mean, there you go. We're just at the beginning of this journey to everyone. So let's let's have a look here. Chris Christoffi has come a long way since selling scratchy tickets on the streets of Cyprus, age 10. But humble beginnings did not stop the 41-year-old property boss building a billion-dollar finance empire while also collecting 22 properties of his own. Mr. Christoffi split his childhood between selling scratchies in the street for his uncle and working 10-hour shifts in his father's supermarket while struggling at school, school due to dyslexia and ADHD. What did I do? I sold mangoes on the stride of the street in Southport. <laughs> I need that for my story. He migrated to Melbourne at 16 to complete his VCE. When I was 19, I asked my father to give me my wedding present of $30,000, even though I was single as could be, he said. A $30,000 gift, guys. You've got to remember, he's 41, so that was about, what, 2000 when he got that gift? Back then, in 2000, $30,000 would have been a 10%, would be more than a 10% deposit on a median home in Victoria. In, oh, sorry, in Melbourne. 
in Melbourne. So, I mean, there you go. There, there is, I'd say, fortuitous luck in the right location just before property boom. Just before property prices shot right up. You can see the Melbourne line there is the dark blue one. And this is 2006. Looks even better if you go back to 2000. And, well, he had access to a deposit that was gifted to him. And nothing wrong with that, with parents doing that. But, you know, fantastic. But you just have to understand, if, if pieces like this are crafted, often people, luck can play a part in it. And that's just part of life sometimes. We've all had lucky moments where you've been at the right situation. With this this job we worked on last year, oh, sorry, this year, and I'll, I'll show it to you. It's a big project. It looks quite, quite beautiful, actually. The photos have just come in. And I'll do a video on it to, to take you through it. But... The re that job that we got, it's a 500 student extension for a school. I met the contact that introduced me to that company because Rachel was going to a breastfeeding advocacy meeting and I just happened to go along to a barbecue. Okay? So that's how I got that contact that just led to this job. That's the th I mean... Well, you wouldn't think it at the at the breastfeeding club, and oh boy, there are a bunch of hippies there. You know, I think they were trying to raise money for Sea Shepherd, and Rachel didn't know what it was. And I was going, "Oh, they're pirates, aren't they? Do you advocate for piracy? Can you imagine how I went over in that crowd, lads?" <laughs> but nonetheless, it led to a to a contact which grew into a, you know to lots of work and lots of projects and lots of opportunities. That's just how life works out sometimes, and that that's the thing you've got to be out there. You know, meeting people, talking to people, and networking. Or, you know, having a dad that's willing to chuck you 30 grand to at least give you a start. Now, that in itself doesn't mean you're, you know, poised for success. That That's the, probably the nudge that you need to have. It's the opportunity that's presented to you, and you need to be capable to take advantage of it. How many people would be given 30 grand and just whittle it away at 19? So good on him for that regards. You know, he turned it into something of value. But that, that's just something that needs to be considered because these stories are just chucked out again and again and again. It's either, you know, property, property, you know, Mongol, Mogul, or, you know, selling a jar of stuff to Woolies or Coles. That's that's all you get in these these newspapers, these, these you know, gossip rags. That, that's how you make it in Australia, guys. You make a chili jam and sell it to one of the, the duopoly, or you get in a property. Honestly. What what else is there? Maybe drop shipping, you know, drop shipping people as well. But they're probably paid placements in these things. The, the the fundamental problem is in Australia. This is just it becomes an obsession, and we're just jumping into property. I did a video a couple of days ago where we're looking at uh, Warren Buffett's you know predictions for a, a stock market crash, and that's the the ratio of market cap of entire market cap to GDP. And it's shot, it's shot up, but it's been up for a while, so it's questionable if it even matters anymore. But I thought, okay, I want to do the same thing for Australia. I want to look at that for Australia. So I went and I, I got, you know, I'll show you here. I'll show you right here. I was going to do this for another video, but we'll just talk about it quickly now. I went and got all of the, the share, uh, the companies that are listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, and to see the market cap for all of them. Now, this is just loading up now. It's taking a moment. Uh, as you can see here but what which company do you think is the number one in australia guys which one is the top it's uh well great that's crashed i gotta start again oh no here we go it's cba guys cba is the number is our biggest market cap company in australia then csl and bhp you've got cba nab all the banks in what one two three four five six in the top six Four of our banks are here. And then you've got Macquarie Group down here. In the US, Microsoft is one of the top ones. Apple is one of the top ones. We've got a bank. Okay, that, that should be a warning sign, guys. That just shows you right there. That just shows you what we are. We're a property, property place. We produce a few other stuff. We dig some stuff out of the ground. And we've got, you know, a duopoly of shopping companies. West Farmers and Woolies. You know? So that that's... I'll put my tinfoil hat on here. Is that why the media is just pre presenting all these arguments? Like, okay, property, property, property. Indirectly helps the banks. Oh, sell stuff to the duopoly that control all of the food in the country. You know? That could be the best you hope for, little pleb. 
So my father told me I couldn't spend it on a car, but I could invest it into real estate. Okay, there you go. So the father setting boundaries and putting rules on it. Good on him. So really, he should thank his dad. You know, his dad set him upright. That's when I fell in love with real estate. And by 24, I had eight investment properties under my belt. So 24, he was already riding this, this capital growth. His real estate sales career blossomed from his early 20s which earned him more than 350000 a year and allowed him to invest. There you go. I mean, it's going to be easier to invest in property when you're making that money. But he was forced to sell off all his assets after his business partnership collapsed, leaving him 780000 in debt with a long list of client financial obligations at almost exactly the same time. His oldest son became deaf after a battle with meningitis. So... In some ways, this is sounding very similar to Dave Ramsey's story, isn't it? If you follow him, you know, make it all good, all going well, and then boom, boom, adversity strikes, and you got to build yourself up. At 24 years old, I went from making 300000 to losing it all. I almost lost my son. I split up with my wife and moved back into my mother's house, he said. I made three goals at that stage to pay off my debts, get back my property portfolio, and help other people along the way. In 2005... Mr. Christoffi uh, started wealth advisory firm Reventon, which now employs more than 50 property and finance experts and manages more than $1 billion in real estate transactions. His determination helped him win the Business News Young Entrepreneur of the Year for financial services in 2019. Since launching his company, he was able to rebuild his own investment portfolio with his wife, uh, Billy. The couple owned 22 together in Victoria, including 10 in Geelong and Queensland that are valued between 5 and 1.5 million. The father of four is now focused on giving back, with his latest property investment going directly towards taking the tackling issues of homelessness. After raising more than 200,000 across three years of Vinny's CEO sleepouts, Mr. Christoffi has plans for even larger donations. He recently bought a block of land in Geelong, suburb of Mount Dun Dunny, and is raising funds via his charity Brick by Brick to help build a house there. Once built, the property is expected to sell for about 700000 with all proceeds going to St. Vincent de Paul Society. Well, good on him. See, this is what you want to see. If people get to this point, if they get to this point with their wealth, with what they've developed, they, are, they want to give back. This is the thing. This is what happens. If you, you know, imagine if we just reduced taxes in general, then people got to this point more often and more could be give, done. Oh, but that would be charity for Florian. We can't have that. We can't have capitalists coming and uh, and providing charity. That would that would tarnish the the propaganda. So let's see what his advice is. Um, he said he was lucky to break into a booming property market, which had become volatile and slower more recently. But there were still ways for young buyers to get ahead. Ask for help and surround yourself with mentors who live and breathe the way you do. Well, I mean that's it's good that he's stepping up to the fact that he got lucky. You know, it's fortuitous, and surrounding yourself with mentors that that seems to be a common trend i mean you become the people you surround yourself with don't spend everything you earn buy the buying the first property is tough but the second and third get easier i have two to three mentors myself and i'm always trying to upskill the simplest thing you can do is pick up a book and he's right there or watch a youtube channel so what do you reckon guys what do you what do you think about about good old chrissy here his story I hope he got back with his wife from back then. I really do, because um, that'd be the hard, that would be the saddest thing. I mean, this is the thing. Yeah, you know, when you're young and you go through tough times, it can either destroy everything or you can face adversity and be stronger for it. I think a lot of people are going to have some tough times now with a recession coming, and uh, that's why you need to be there for your friends, even just to talk to them. We'll have to see what happens, everyone. So there we have it. You know, how to build a property empire. Be that right time, get some right money, and don't waste it. <laughs> it's, I mean, he's got some simple points here at the moment. You know, his advice. Surround yourself with mentors. Don't spend everything you earn and, and read books. Which is pretty simple advice, but, you know, you've got to do it. 
What do you think, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.